My friends, I speak to you in the name of God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. How can I pray in times such as these? Last Wednesday night was the first time that I had a chance to pause and to rest. And I met with one of my very dear friends for dinner. And after dinner, we walked over to Trinity Bellwoods Park and we laid under a tree, much like on a day as today. And as we spoke, and as we listened to each other, my friend said to me, I find it difficult to pray in such a time such as this. My heart is heavy, it feels pain, anguish. And I knew what he meant. The days immediately following Following the fire, I prayed. How do we pray in times such as these? We do because the love of Christ compels us. I've given this a lot of thought over the week. Much of the week I felt like I had no idea what I was doing. But I persisted, somehow convinced that God was working in us in this time, probably more than any other time in this church's history. And I felt the power of God, the power of the Spirit, breathing in and through this community, even on the day of the fire. And the love that each of you had shown and the fact that in the days immediately after you came together and said, how do we be church in this time? So despite in my grief and my sadness, I felt hope. Some of you might know about the prophet Jeremiah. Jeremiah preached at a time of great tribulation and difficulty. Israel be went under siege by Babylon and the temple, the glorious temple of Solomon was completely destroyed and the people wept. They were even taken away from their homeland. They lost everything they had. And Jeremiah stood at the foot of the temple and cried, O Lord, O Lord, why have you done this to your people? But Jeremiah did not give up. For though the temple had fallen, he knew that the people had work to do. That they had to live justly, to proclaim justice, and be a light to all peoples, despite the great and devastating trials that befell them. And the people did. You see, we are called to do the same. Don't get me wrong, I know the pain of losing this church. As I said, I've wept many a times. But I am convinced, and I will live for this, and I will die for this message that the resurrection breathes life into all things. And you and I are resurrection people, and you and I are living the resurrection here and now. And that Christ tells us that the church will thrive no matter what building or structure we have. And we have a job at this time. We have a job at this time to work with God's holy people, with God's creation, to witness to a new thing as we heard in that reading. There's a new thing being born here and now, and I invite you to share with me in that. 
because the love of Christ compels us to do so. We gather because Christ calls us as friends, as brothers and sisters, as his beloved, to share in his great work of redemption of humanity. And it's for that reason that we pray. It's for that reason that we gather today to celebrate the great hymn of thanksgiving and praise and to offer our sacrifice of praise to God because we know God's grace is working in and through us now and that God has a plan and mission for all of you. This is a time for us to be church, to not be confined by the walls, to not be confined by the institutions, by the meetings and by all that, but to actually be church and to proclaim life, hope. Look at how many people turn to this church. Look how many of them come here to be inspired by the great works of art, music, to be fed and nourished by the community dinner, by the Eucharist, to come to find a place of solace when the world may seem to be in utter turmoil. That's our job, to provide hope and comfort for all, and to live in unity and love with each other because the love of Christ compels us on. Now I know I won't be perfect in this. And believe me, every morning I wake up and I think, Lord, I have no idea what you're doing here. I really don't. Bishop, they don't train us in seminary for this. <laughs> they don't. But my friends, I honestly wake up. I know the love of God. The love of God for each and every one of you. And as I said so many times this week, we are a church for all people. We are a broad and welcoming church for all, and this church will be a place for all people. And we will provide hope, and we will witness to the resurrection in all we do, however imperfect that may be. But we do so by the grace of God. You see, big things are happening here. Good things are happening here. I want to bring to a close by pointing to something we heard in the gospel today. Jesus spoke about the mustard seed. Now the mustard seed is quite interesting. The mustard seed, once it gets planted, it can really spread. <laughs> It goes all over, and in fact, it's quite difficult to get rid of. That bush just goes all over the place. Well, guess what? We came from that mustard seed, and we are going to spread. And we are going to go far and wide. And we are going to be strong, and we are going to withstand dry days, rainy days, hopefully not now, but <laughs> rainy days. do so in the love of Christ and compelled by that love. There's a prayer I want to share with you and I'm going to grab my phone. Clearly I couldn't use text today. I want to use my phone. There was a great priest in the 20th century by the name of Thomas Merton. Some of you might have heard of Thomas Merton. Thomas Merton was a Trappist monk just outside of Louisville, Kentucky. And Thomas, I think, would have shared our vision of a church that's wide and all-encompassing. The thing about Thomas is Thomas was deeply rooted in a life of prayer and grace. And to the world, he seemed like he had everything put together, like he knew what he was doing. But then after he died, some came across a prayer 
that he wrote. And I thought of this prayer when we sat under that tree last Wednesday night. When my friend said, how do we pray in times such as these? And so I want to close and I'll share this prayer later, but I hope this becomes our prayer as well. Let us pray. My Lord God, I have no idea where I am going. I do not see the road ahead of me. I cannot know for certain where it will end, nor do I really know myself. And the fact that I think I am following your will does not mean that I am, I am actually doing so. But I believe that the desire to please you does, in fact, please you. And I hope I have that desire in all that I am doing. I hope that I will never do anything apart from that desire. And I know that if I do this, you will lead me by the right road. Though I may know nothing about it, therefore will I trust you always, though I may seem to be lost in the shadow of death. I will not fear, for you are with me, and you will never leave me to face my perils alone. My friends, I will serve you faithfully. I will uphold you. I will do the very best that I can with the grace of God. And we as a church will rise again. And we will become once again that beautiful light across the city and the country, a light that speaks with the generous and lavish love of God. Christ is risen, and so are we. Amen.